All right, well, now we're starting to get into more interesting situations. In this case, all the numbers were the same for the two devices, but that's just because the circuit was so simple. We can't assume the numbers are always the same. Notice that in this circuit, the currents are still the same everywhere, but the voltages are not the same everywhere. That's what tends to get people confused. They can't figure out what's the same between different devices and what's different. Well, here the currents are still all the same, but the voltage changes are different. And what we're trying to do is get some analogies and intuition that will make it obvious to us which things are the same and which things are different. It should be obvious here that the voltage drops have to add up to the voltage source, because this is a gain in height and these are the losses in height. And we, um, if we go through the circuit, if we go all the way around the circuit, we have to end up at the same height that we started, with no change in height. So the total gains in height have to equal the total losses in height in order to get back to where you started. So the total gains in voltage around the loop have to equal the total losses in voltage around the loop. But there's no reason to think that 3 amps plus 3 amps has to add up to the 6 amps over here. That's a, this is a totally different concept. figure out everything that we can about this circuit. Okay. Um, it has four amps at the other two devices. Yeah, four skiers per second coming off here, push aside four skiers per second here, and four skiers per second here. Great. Okay, that's harder to describe, but that's good. So I was trying to trick you into saying that this would be 7 volts and this would be 7 volts, but you didn't fall for that, so that's good. Is this going to be bigger or smaller than 7 volts? Bigger. Yeah. This has to be bigger because this, is the, because this is the total height gain, and that has to be equaled by the, height, the two height losses over here. So, for example, we might say that this over here might be, say, 10 volts. And then what can we figure out? So that the total gain in height here is matched by the total losses in the other parts of the loop. Very good. All the currents are the same here, but we can't let that fool us into thinking all the voltages will be the same. Good? harder because it's a slightly different arrangement. Let's try to figure out as much as we can here. There might be some things that we can't figure out. So let's see what we can and can't figure out here. We're going to, we want to go back to our basic intuitions for what voltage means and what amps mean, maybe using the ski lift analogy. So what can we figure out here? This might take some thought. That's a guess? Any guesses about the voltage? Yeah. Um, I think it's like 15. And also the second. And part in here too? Yeah. Why is that? Why do you think that these will be the same as this? Well, just because it can make it can jump 15, like up 15 volts. Right. And then make a circuit and jump down. That's a really good analysis. Excellent. That's exactly the right way to think about that. So let's think about this in terms of our ski lift analogy again, or, or even without in terms of the ski lift. So let's say we start here. Well, if we move up to here, we've gained 15 units of height. And then if we go through this loop, we get back to where we started. So we must lose all those 15 units over here. So if we go through this loop, we must gain 15 units of height here and lose 15 units of height over here. But you could make the same argument for this loop. 
you go through this loop, you must be gaining 15 units of height over here, and then we have to lose all the height over here, because in this loop, we're not going through this portion anymore. Let's put that in terms of the ski lift. What does this mean in terms of the ski lift? Well, this is a ski lift where there's only one path from the top to the bottom of the mountain. Anybody who's at the top of the mountain here is forced to go through this path to get to the bottom. This is like a ski lift where there's multiple paths down the mountain. A skier who gets to the top of the ski lift here, they could choose to go down this path to get back to the bottom of the mountain, or they could choose to go down this path. That's pretty realistic, right? Um, usually there are more than one path uh, down the mountain. There's like the, uh, the really steep and dangerous and exciting path and then the shallower path. So this works pretty good in our ski lift analogy. This just means there's more than one path you can take to get back down to the bottom of the mountain. And remember that these are the only downhill portions. Well, when the skiers take this path, this is the only downhill portion, so they have to lose all 15 units of height on this portion to get back to where they started at the bottom of the ski lift. Whereas if they decide to take this path, they have to lose all their height over this portion. Because when they go down this path, they're not taking this path. All right, so it's good that you saw that we don't add these two together to get this like we did over here. These two were on the same path, so it made sense that the height changes had over here had to add up to the height get, um, gain over here. But these are on different paths, so there's no reason why these two heights should add up to this. But now let's think about it again about the current. Now we're thinking about this again in terms of our ski lift analogy. There are three skiers per second coming off the top of the ski lift. Does that mean that there must be three skiers per second going through here? That's right, there's two different paths. So we're going to have to revise our first guess about the current. In fact, we can't get a precise number based on the information I've given you here, but you can say something about the relationship between these two currents and this current. Yeah, that's right. For example, let's say there's two amps going through here. What should be the current over here? If there are three skiers per second coming off the top of the ski lift, and two skiers per second choose to take this path, well, that leaves one skier per second to go through this path. Maybe the water analogy works very well here. If this is pumping three liters per second to the top of the hill, and if two liters per second have to go down, happen to go down via this path, then there, that leaves one liter per second to go down via this path. So if this was 0.5 amps, what would this be? Very good. OK, so in this case, we can see the voltages were all the same, and the currents added up to the current from the battery. Whereas compare here, here the currents were the same, and the voltages added up to the voltage from the battery. So you can see how people can get confused between these two situations. Well, rather than trying to memorize every possible situation, we just want to use our analogies, thinking in terms of, if we think about this in terms of a ski lift, we should always be able to figure out which things are equal and which things add up to other things. This is like skiers per second, and this is like a change in height. That helps us. And if there's more than one loop, that just is like more than one path from the top to the bottom of the mountain. Let's give some names to these situations. Um, would you say that these two resistors are in series or parallel? Up here. Yeah, because it makes sense that here we have a series of resistors where you have to go through this and then through this. Whereas, would it make sense that these are in parallel to each other? But we need to give some technical definitions for those terms, because sometimes things that seem like they're in series or parallel aren't. Two things are in series if anything that goes through one device is forced to go through the other device. So let's put that in your notes, because that can be important in problems. Series means that anything that goes through one device is forced to go through the other device. two devices are in series, or two points are in series, if anything that goes through one point is forced to go through the other point. For example, anything that goes through this device would be forced to go through here, and vice versa. Anything that went up through here would be forced to go through here. So these must be in series. We also need to have a technical definition for things that are in parallel, because sometimes things seem to be in parallel, but they're not. Things are in parallel if the tops of the devices are directly connected with no intermediate devices, and the bottoms of the devices are directly connected with no intermediate devices. So 
the tops of these two things are directly connected. We can go from here to here without passing through any other devices. And the bottoms are also directly connected by a wire. We can go from here to here without going through any intermediate devices. That's what tells us these are in parallel. So you have to check both the tops and the bottoms. If the tops are connected with no intermediate devices and the bottoms are connected with no intermediate devices, um, the things are in parallel. So that should be in your notes as well. Parallel is when the tops of the devices are connected with no intermediate devices and the bottoms are connected with no intermediate devices. <coughs>